Hi, my name is Ralf Schmid and I'm the manager of ICT, the Applied Materials Group which develops all of our eBeam columns. Today I want to introduce you to the basic physics and technology behind different eBeam products used in the semiconductor industry for applications such as metrology, defect inspection and defect review. The first question we need to answer is, why do we need electron beam technology at all? And the simple answer is resolution. Electron beam systems can reach sub-nanometer resolution. This is way superior to light optical systems and meets the requirements of the current and future semiconductor technology nodes. An e-beam column uses a focused beam of electrons to generate an image. The electrons are emitted from a source. Magnetic and electric fields act like light optical lenses or mirrors and shape, focus and deflect the beam. While the electron beam scans the wafer, it interacts with the material and generates signal electrons. These emitted electrons are collected and used to form an image. Algorithms are tailored to the specific application to extract the relevant image information. The quality of an e-beam system can be assessed in three levels. Its imaging capabilities, its performance and its productivity. And I will now go into each one in detail. When the primary electrons penetrate the wafer, they are scattered into an onion-shaped volume. In this scattering process, low-energy electrons, so-called secondary electrons or SE, are generated, which can leave the wafer only from a very thin surface layer. This signal is very sensitive to surface structures. High-energy electrons, so-called backscattered electrons or BSE, are also generated, which can leave the wafer from a larger volume. Backscattered electrons contain more information from the bulk material and thus from lower layers. The detection system converts the number of electrons to gray levels. The more electrons, the brighter. Secondary electrons are very sensitive to the surface geometry. When the E-beam hits a tilted surface, more secondary electrons can leave the substrate. This is the reason why edges appear brighter in the SEM image. This effect is called edge contrast and is commonly used to image the surface topography. On top of the basic image creation with secondary electrons, there are imaging capabilities and modes which enable many different applications for semiconductor process control. We shall review the key ones. Material contrast is caused by the fact that different materials interact differently with the electron beam, so the emission yield varies by material. In the example we can see that silicon oxide has lower yield, thus looks darker, than the high yield copper, which is bright. Backscattered electrons show this effect even more pronounced. Electron beams can also be used to inject charge and to image voltages. The balance between primary beam and emitted electrons can be controlled by beam energy and extraction field. It is thus possible to control the voltage in both directions. The charging influences the energy of the emitted electrons. If the detection system is sensitive for this, voltages can be measured. The left image in the example is obtained without voltage sensitivity. In the right image, the detection system generates a brighter signal when it comes from a negatively charged area. Using charging and voltage contrast, electrical defects, for example shorts or opens in a wafer, can be visualized. Topography imaging is critical to understanding the structure and shapes of a device. This can be achieved by using multiple detectors collecting electrons scattered into different directions. By combining the signals of these detectors, the surface topography can be reconstructed. The 4Q image shows a significant topography enhancement. E-beam tilt is an important feature which allows for obtaining additional information by tilting the beam so that it can image side structures. It requires a careful design of the e-beam column to maintain the resolution also in tilt mode. Imaging buried structures requires to increasing landing energy of the beam so that it can penetrate deeper into the substrate. High landing energies over 10 kilo electron volts as well as efficient collection of backscattered electrons enable together the imaging of subsurface or underlayer features and see through the higher layers. 
Another challenge is the imaging of structures with high aspect ratio. These structures are very deep and narrow. The electron beam has to be aligned and shaped very accurately in order to be able to reach the bottom of a high aspect ratio structure. In combination with an efficient BSE collection, these features can be imaged as shown in the images on the right. For applications involving sensitive films, such as resist, which can be damaged by high landing energies, a good column needs to be able to provide quality imaging at low landing energy as well. Another critical effect is when electrical charge is accumulated on the wafer, causing image distortions. These effects can be avoided using suitable landing energies and extraction fields, as well as optimized timing of beam deflection. The optimized combination of all methods mentioned so far in an advanced e-beam column allows us to generate the best image quality, which is required for applying the algorithms for automatic defect review, CD measurement and inspection. System performance and productivity refer to measurable quantities that can be used to characterize and compare different technologies and tools. Resolution is one of the most important eBeam system performance metrics. Here, resolution samples are imaged with different probe currents. The resolution is then determined by dedicated algorithms. In general, a lower current creates a more narrow spot and supports better resolution. One of the most crucial challenges in column design is generating fine spots at low landing energies that have high current density for faster system throughput. The higher the current density is in the e-beam probe, the lower the signal noise in the image, so the shorter the image acquisition time can be. Precision and accuracy are also measurable metrics of an e-beam system. And they are especially important for metrology tools, which measure small features for controlling process stability in semiconductor lines. Accuracy refers to how close the measurement is to the true measurement as taken by a benchmark tool. And precision refers to how repeatable the measurement is. The e-beam column design for a good metrology system must enable both accuracy and precision. This chart shows a demonstration of resolution and accuracy in an e-beam CD-SAM, which stands for Critical Dimension Scanning Electron Microscope. The diameter of silicon nanowires was measured down to 6 nanometers in width in, and compared as reference to a transmission electron microscope which has even higher resolution but cannot be used in a semiconductor line. The measurement confirmed the high accuracy of the CD-SAM. In order to be productive for process control and monitoring in a semiconductor production environment, eBIM systems aim to be as fast as possible. This is extremely important for the inspection application, which requires maximum wafer coverage. This formula describes the main factors which determine the throughput of an e-beam inspection system. One important factor is determined by the application, the size d of the defect to be detected. And this factor is becoming more challenging with every technology node. We can see from the equation that if a defect is two times smaller, then throughput will be typically 16 times slower on the same system unless compensated for by advanced features of the inspection system. The most important one is current density. Current density is the number of electrons per electron spot area. The higher the current density, the faster is the throughput at a given resolution. Achieving a high current density requires a high intensity electron source in combination with an optimized electron optics. Increasing the number n of beams in an inspection system will enable it to run even faster. The contrast C also plays an important role for throughput improvements. The contrast is the ratio between the signal of a defective point on the wafer and the signal of a corresponding location but without defect. Higher contrast enables detection with fewer electrons and results in better throughput because it is possible to scan the e-beam faster. This is why we also focus on optimizing the detection system in our e-beam columns. To summarize, 
The use of e-beam technologies in semiconductor manufacturing grows continuously as design rules shrink and device architectures become more complex. The goal of any e-beam system is to provide the highest resolution and image quality and versatility at the highest possible throughput. Thank you for watching.